Hi, this is my TOK essay breakdown series for May 2023. In these videos I'll be unpacking the key terms and ideas in the title, as well as looking at the question from the perspective of two areas of knowledge. For a more detailed analysis, examples and ideas on how to approach this title using different AOKs and other TOK concepts, please check out my May 2023 essay guides, link in the description. So in this video we'll be looking at title one, which is, is replicability necessary in the production of knowledge? Discuss with reference to two areas of knowledge. Beginning with our key terms. First one we have here is of course replicability. I've put a couple of definitions here. Uh, one which you lean towards might depend on the AOKs you choose. So for example, with the first one here, I've put the ability to repeat an experiment or study and attain consistent results. This one may be more appropriate for talking about the human or natural sciences. Whereas my second definition here is a bit more general and that is the degree to which knowledge may be copied in order to be used to produce further knowledge. The second term here I've put is necessary, which I've rephrased as an essential requirement for the production of knowledge, which here I've worded as the creation of knowledge that was not previously available to humanity or to a particular society. You can word this one however you want. Okay, some points I recommend you consider when you're approaching this title. First of all, think about some different ways in which a lack of replicability could undermine the process of knowledge production. So for example, could it harm the credibility of a particular study or set of findings? Secondly, consider alternative means through which scientists, other academics and researchers can gain confidence in their results. For example, through using meta-analysis. In other words, combining the results of multiple studies. Finally, as I briefly touched on, note how the use of the term replicability can differ slightly according to the AOK you're referring to. If you're talking about the arts and the sciences, you may not necessarily use this word in the same sense. Let's look at our AOKs now. First one I've put is for natural sciences. And to begin, we're talking about how replicability plays a role in the natural sciences and what actually constitutes a replicable scientific knowledge claim. The criterion that they have to meet is that they are supported by new data. So they are supported by consistent results. For the claim, I've started by arguing that yes, replicability is necessary in scientific knowledge production. After all, given that the natural sciences, sciences rather, seek to describe and explain the material world in objective terms, it does make sense that scientists must be able to demonstrate the veracity of their findings repeatedly. Moreover, a lack of replicability could be indicative of flaws in the research methodology, for example, the presence of bias or a lack of knowledge. For the counterclaim, we'll go the other way and say that replicability isn't always necessary in the production of scientific knowledge. The justification I've given for this is that the scope and complexity of scientific research means inconsistencies will naturally arise. Moreover, such sources of non-replicability could actually be categorized as helpful as they may in fact lead to the discovery of new phenomena or insights. 
Bringing these ideas together in our mini conclusion, I've put the whilst replicability is not always necessary in the production of preliminary scientific knowledge, it is necessary to provide credibility to existing knowledge. For the second AOK, I have chosen history. Before deciding on whether replicability is a necessary aspect of historical knowledge production, we need to define what it means in the context of this AOK. A straightforward way of doing so may be to define it as the ability to accurately reproduce past events. For the claim, I have stated that no replicability is not necessary in the production of historical knowledge, given that true replication may not even be possible when studying past events, given that in most cases we do not have direct access to such past events. For the counterclaim, however, I have stated that actually replicability could be necessary when we're dealing with historical research involving observational evidence, in other words, physical objects and processes. Reason being, historical documents, buildings and artefacts may need to be replicated in order to be investigated or studied further. Bring these ideas together in our mini conclusion, I have stated here that replicability is not a necessary component of most historical knowledge production, though it could be in the case of studying physical artefacts. For essay guides and personal feedback, feel free to check out my website, tokessayhelp.com. Many thanks for watching.